Hi, this is David McCann for WebTNG. In this video, I'm taking a look at Fluent Booking. This is a brand new plugin. I had a chance to try out the beta and the version 1.0 was just released. Fluent Booking is from the WP Manage Ninja team, the same group that makes Fluent Forms, Fluent CRM, and other well-respected plugins. In this video, I'm going to do a walkthrough so that you can see what kind of features are available, where they're located, and get an idea how the plugin works. At the end, I'll share some comments and conclusions. This is the Fluent Booking website, brand new. You can see that they've got a launch deal going. Uh, there's information here about how it works and its features. These are integrations that they show. Not every one of these is available in version one today. A few things I think are still coming. And then I think the plan is to continue to add integrations. The pricing is $99 lifetime for one site, five sites for $249, and 50 sites for $499. And then I also wanted to show you that at launch, they have a pretty good document library already available. Okay, I've got a test site now for Fluent Booking. This is the default 2023 core theme. Got some test posts. And if we look at the plugins, I've got ACF installed for a custom post type in my test server, and then I've got WP Reset to reset the site between testing rounds. Okay, let's install Fluent Booking now. I've already downloaded it. Okay, so I install it, activate it, and it wants the license key. So I'll pause the video and enter that. Okay, so I've entered the license key, and now we have our admin interface, the different screens for the admin. Notice we have navigation across the top and the side. So we have settings, availability, bookings, calendar, and dashboard. And here it says getting started. Okay, so when you start out, the dashboard is a wizard here, and that's what happens whenever you add a new host. You kind of go through a process of setting them up. But before we do that, let's look at the settings options. These are some email defaults that you can set if you want a summary notification and then you know some default to and from email information, email footer, and things like that. Team, this is where you can add other users. You have the option to give users some control over other people's schedules so you can have someone to help manage them. Then we have the option to set up the Google Calendar and Google Meet integration, and there's documentation on that. Same for Zoom, there's documentation for setting that up. This is not enabled yet. I think this is coming soon for SMS notifications. Stripe options are available now, and then the license. Availability, bookings, calendars. These are going to be populated once we get started and go through the setup wizard. First, it wants us to set up our first one of all of these. So let's set up a group event where we'll have product walkthroughs for like pre-sales. So it's one-to-one -one or one-to-many. So you can have on your calendar a time slot for one person, or you can have time slots for multiple people. So you have more than one person in a time slot. Okay, so we'll enter our title, pre-sales, questions, and it'll be a half hour meeting and then ask about our products. And then you have options. It can be a Google Meet in person, a phone conference, online meeting or custom. So I'm gonna do online meeting. You can have your meeting link here. I think this means that if you had something other than Zoom or Google Meet, you could probably enter your URL here. But right now I'm just going to enter a fake one. And then since this is a free event, I'll go ahead and show the display event on the booking page. And you can set your time zones. 
All right, then it says create your availability. So this is an availability calendar. I want to have these available just on Fridays from nine to noon, okay? And so here's the summary. Now we have max invitees per slot. So we'll say we can have up to 10 people during a time slot. And then schedules. So how far in the future can people sign up? Are we gonna use the existing schedule that I created? Yes, but we could customize it and set something different. This is the name of my schedule, the only one I have set up so far. That's the default name it gives us. We'll see if we can change it. I'm not sure if we can change it or not. If we set customs, then we can add date overrides. All right, and then what's the cutoff for people signing up? Email notifications, this is kind of a cool feature. You can send confirmations to the attendee and the organizer when sign up as reminders and then when canceling. So we can turn on reminders for attendees. You can go in and edit it. You have this kind of classic editor type of interface. You see this is the default template they've given you. There's the option to reschedule or cancel. And so that's handled by the plugin by Fluent Booking. Up here, it shows you these kind of magic tags that you can use when you create these. We go to booking questions. So this is the form that the users are gonna see when they sign up. And what is this meeting about? Well, that's kind of a funny question to be asking them. So let's edit this and let's say, which features are you most interested in? Okay, so we can ask a question on the sign up form. We can add more questions and currently it allows email, text, text area, number, phone, and drop down. Like if you're doing consulting or something, you may want to get more information from the user. Then their payment options, we haven't set that up yet. Their web hooks, I think they're gonna have Zapier and maybe Pabli and other ways of integrating, you know, other platforms and services. Uh, right now they have web hook options, so you can set that up if uh, you want to. And then integrations, it's telling us here that it is integrated with Fluent CRM for email marketing and in customer management engagement if we had that installed. At the top, it's telling us that we're setting up a booking event for me, and this is the name of it. So now if we go to the dashboard, it's changed. It's no longer that wizard interface. We now have a report dashboard. We now see my calendar of events. Okay, and here I can set up another event if I want to add another event to this calendar. And these are my host settings. I could upload an image and I can set a featured image. Okay, and then say something about me. You know, you probably put in a short bio or something there. And then this is an important option here and this is to enable a landing page feature. Okay, this is not a regular type page where you create a page. We'll do that too. This is kind of a pseudo landing page feature, which is kind of cool. And you can set it for all booking forms or only selected events. Save that. Okay, and we'll go back. Now that I've allowed the landing page feature, here is a link to that which I could share in an email or drop in chat or something like that. If we go to the share button, we see there are three options. You can get a, a short code to embed the signup form, the calendar and everything, which so you could put it wherever you need to in WordPress. There is this option for a block, and we'll look at this in a minute. So this is Fluent Bookings in Gutenberg. Or there's this landing page. You know, you can copy the URL, but let's go and view it just so you can see, this is the calendar then. This is your kind of pseudo page that the Fluent Bookings is generating for us. Okay, here are our Fridays. 
And so we'll schedule here. I mean, you know, I'm signing up for my own signing up for my own event. A little odd, but it's okay. Rescheduling and canceling. That's also handled by Fluent Booking. Okay, and then there's the option to add to a calendar, add to Outlook, Microsoft Office, or some other external calendar feature. And you get an email that's just like this. This is kind of similar to what the email looks like. So let's close that. And let's say that we want to go into Gutenberg. Let's add a new page. Okay, and then we go to Fluent Bookings. All right, and we pick the event we want to embed. And they give us a preview of it here. So this is actually the WP Manage Ninja team is up to their game now. And they are giving us previews of these. Used to be that we would just see the short code there. So this is much nicer because you can lay out the page and see what it looks like. All right, so you publish that. And then if we want to go and view that, right? So it's the same kind of thing we saw when we looked at the pseudo page. But here, you can have it on your website, put it in your menus, send people links to it, add extra information, whatever you need to. So there's one more thing that I'd like to show you. If we go to the admin and users, I have another user created on the site and is an author role, okay, not an administrator. So now I'm logged in as me. If I go into Fluent Booking to Calendars and I add a new host, I want Anne to host some events. I'll add her. And we'll set up some one-to-one -one events. We'll have her do customer support and product training and one-hour meetings. Okay, and it will be an online meeting. Put in our fake Zoom link. Okay, and continue. And we'll just say that's Anne's job for the foreseeable future. And continue. Okay, and save. Now I want to log out as me. And I'll log in as Anne. Okay, you see I see the fluent booking admin area, but the settings menu doesn't show now. So remember, I'm logged in as Anne. I go to the dashboard. Anne only sees her own events, so she doesn't see the previous bookings and calendar and whatever that I created before. And if she goes to her calendar and events, she just sees the one for her. And that's what she can manage. Okay, I just wanted to show you that there are some user management and access control features built in to Fluent Booking. Okay, so that's the first look and walkthrough. Now just a couple of comments. First thing, while using Fluent Bookings, it seemed to me that this would be a great solution for solopreneurs and small teams. It's an easy way to offer and manage self-service appointment bookings, and it seems like it would be a good fit for teachers or coaches, trainers, consultants, and other people offering free or paid sessions. Of course, this is version one, and the list of features and integrations is limited. You can certainly use it now, but I know they plan more integrations and plan to expand the plugin to accommodate more use cases like in-person services and all-day events. Also, I think the Manage Ninja team is looking for feedback from early adopters, and they'll use that to help guide future development. So that's my first look and walk through a fluent booking. I wanted to give you an idea of how it works and how you can use it. If you found the video useful, please subscribe to the channel and give it a thumbs up. It really helps. There's a text summary of the video available on the WebTNG website, along with other walkthroughs, reviews, and resources. Thank you for watching.